Hey everyone, Pinchy Al here, and on today's episode, we are working on Ian's Mark II Golf GTI. And on today's episode, we're actually going to pull this motor tonight, and the next day, we're going to tear it apart, slap a new head on another block, and get it back up and running. So, let's get to work, because this is Pinchy Al's Garage. So on this Mark II GTI, it's 100% stock 8-valve using the uh, FIS injector system. So our goal here is to not touch anything on the left-hand side besides unbolting everything and just moving it out of the way. Same goes to everything else on the right-hand side. We're just going to unbolt, move it out of the way, take the front end clip off, and then pull the motor out, disassemble and then reassemble and slap it all back in. And we're gonna try to do this within 24 hours, which shouldn't be that bad. Um, one of the big things that you're gonna fall into since it's such an old vehicle, and you guys always hear me saying this with old cars, remember, remember, remember it's old. Things are going to break. Be ready to start replacing parts that you already think you know are gonna break. So plan ahead. Um, in this scenario, our job is to not remove as much, to, to leave as much original stuff intact so we don't have to cause any damage on the way out. And same thing on the way back in. Uh, things that are gonna matter the most when they look like they're gonna break, original radiator hoses, number one. Your, uh, your shift cable, your clutch cable here. Uh, this guy is notorious for breaking. It's under a lot of tension. The lever down here, obviously the super old wiring, if you haven't replaced it, I mean, I would go through it and start looking through everything and just double checking everything. There's not a lot of wires in this car, so it's just really good. Uh, the radiator, fan shroud, the radiator itself, the air box intake, the coolant ball, this gigantic thing for for the uh, wiper, obviously the battery, battery tray, most of that's steel, so not that, that big of a deal. Um, when you get down to the front end, down low, the motor mounts, the transmission mount, and the rear motor mount, more than likely if you've never serviced it or it's been serviced and you don't remember the last time you serviced, you're probably gonna have to be ready to swap out new bushings. I would recommend it for a fresh uh, removal and install. Once you remove it, it's super easy to get to. I mean, it's, it's literally a couple bolts and you can swap everything out super quick. Um, the front end core, the grill especially is one thing you really have to be super careful for with. They tend to break really, really easy if it's an original one. If uh, aftermarket, you might be okay. Uh, front bumper, again, another, uh, the actual bumper itself is from here down. Uh, it's actually bolted to the frame. Be super careful when removing. These guys, uh, especially the guides, the guides that sit right here, that actually hold the bumper and line the bumper up correctly. They're actually right here and behind the bumper. Uh, they're old, they're plastic, and you have a high risk of just snapping them. Again, these are parts that you either, one, have them ready to replace, two, be extremely careful when removing. Uh, you're gonna be ready, you're gonna damage it. I'm, I'm just promising you this, you're gonna damage it if you're not cautious on your removal process. Um, we're going to show you again how to remove everything uh, before we even get to the removal we're going to get you guys step by step on how to do everything here all right but yeah it's a cool little mark too uh, the reason why we're going to do a, a fresh block which is right over here um, he's getting ready to autocross it and he's a very specific class so he has to fall within very specific horsepower and uh, guidelines for his build and he can't be like making a ton of horsepower because then he won't be in a very specific class so that's why we want to make sure everything's done to a T and what we're trying to do. Uh, we're doing an ABA block with a, with the eight valve head. So we're kind of doing a conversion to get extra torque or actually more, uh, more actually higher compression with more torque. So not as much horsepower, but he's going to be making some better numbers um, without like really increasing too much power. All right, let's get to work. So now that we popped the grill off, 
Uh, really quick, just to show you guys, uh, the grill comes off with these little notches. You just poke them and then pull it out. Um, what you're gonna have a problem uh, with, just make sure you take your time. Remove the four 10 millimeter bolts down here. There's two here, two here, and then the fifth one is down here at the bottom. You guys can see that, yep. Don't put the light on, they're so bright. <laughs> right there so that holds the entire core support itself and once you do that you're going to want to take off these two bolts here these two bolts here and then there's a bolt here and a bolt right here and that will leave the radiator uh, detached from the car as well uh, so ian there he is finally <laughs> Megan chicken Megan chicken He's gonna remove that very loudly. Once we get those removed and we get the core support out, you're gonna have access to the 17 millimeter bolt here and here. Since this is a small bumper, we're gonna be able to pull the small bumper off and then get access to the lower portion of the lip so we can unbolt the lower portion of the bumper off and then we can actually start working in the engine bay itself. So now that we took all the hardware off on it, we're going to get the headlights unplugged. And crammed it in, battery, the genius. Uh, once you remove those, we'll be able to pull the core support straight up. Pretty easy. We have full access now to the bumper, and that's what's going to be next to remove the top portion. This is a small bumper, just so you guys know. Small bumpers are two piece kits technically. You have this portion, and then all the metal pieces down below. Big bumpers are literally just one solid bumper bolted onto the car. So um, that's the difference between a small and big bumper uh, Mark II. Um, one thing to give you guys a heads up. This portion, all the metal pieces, be very careful when removing, uh, they break. It's all metal, which you can bend. This is really, really thin metal, so be very careful. Uh, this guy, like I showed you guys earlier, earlier there's two 17 millimeter bolts on the sides. When you pull it off, follow the guides, and don't yank, because you can break the plastic guides if, if you never replace them. So uh, the next step we had to do was actually remove the radiator completely. So the upper, the lower radiator hose detached. We took off the two wires on the actual radiator itself. The fan. Yeah, one on the yeah, fan and one on the front. Of the th yeah, uh, fan switch. So it was just two wires or two two plugs on there. Upper, lower radiator hose were detached. Yank the radiator completely out. It sits on this cross member right across. Just pull it straight up and take it out. That's out now. I forgot to mention, there's four 17 millimeter bolts on this cross member right here. Actually five, five, because you have uh, the one holding the motor mount here underneath. So there's one, two, three, four, and number five. There's a 13 millimeter on this one as well. You take all that off. Yeah, that's a 17 and a 13. Six, yes. In total, <laughs> you take those off, and then this cross member, you can, uh, it's, it, 
his uh, it's on. It's rusted on, you know, it's a feature. Once it's off, you'll be able to slide this bumper off, actually. I want to grab that side. So that bumper comes right off now, out of the way. So now you have full access to the front end of the car. We still want to remove the lower metal bumper, uh, which is bolted on pretty much in four corners. You'll see here, one, two, um, I think there's some more underneath, three, four. Um, there's a couple other little weird bolts on the bottom of the, the body. Again, that's what's next. So you can pull this cross member out and get that metal tin off. And then we actually have full access to the engine to get ready to pull it out. Um, these cars are like goofy on the front, but the rest of it's super simple once you get that all removed. I'll show you guys what to do next. Yeah, take it off. So, another heads up. Um, uh, uh, that one, no. So, um, yeah. So, Ian now took off the second half of the uh, cross member because it's like a two piece kit. There's a lower piece and then there's a top. The lower one now got is getting removed. Uh, well, technically, it's the upper one, but it's kind of weird. Um, this is what the. Um, Radiator. The radiator and uh, technically the front lower bumper bolts onto, but it wasn't bolted on. Yeah. I water <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, it's seen better days. It's definitely seen better days. That's... So now we have the front core support completely removed, lower bumper, middle bumper, grill, all of it's gone. Now we have full access to the engine. You have to put the engine on a um, jack because uh, the front engine. The front motor mount literally holds it from tilting forward and falling forward. Um, the next step here is now removing all the side pieces. Uh, pretty much everything is bolted onto it, around it, removed. Make sure you tag everything, bag everything, and clean everything before you put it back. So if you have a wire brush, get a wire brush, start cleaning all your hardware before you put it all back. If possible, Get new hardware. <laughs> what? All right. So we're gonna show you guys how to do the side, the pretty much the the removal of everything on the left, and the removal of everything on the right, and then everything in the middle afterwards. And then we're gonna get ready to pull the engine out. Um, the engine and now is only held together by the left, the rear left motor mount, and the rear right motor mount. Which is and that's it. Like that's that's and the axles. But that's that's literally pretty much it. Is that's holding it in. All right. All right, we're back. So, like we said earlier before, we're gonna pretty much disconnect a bunch of stuff. So we took out. We didn't take out, but we disconnected the fuel injection system with the F FIS or no C CIS. It's all disconnected. So all four injectors. And the line that goes to the manifold there. We took the uh, that uh, the solenoid that sits right here. Took that out. Unplugged the O2 sensor and the two wires that sit back here, and that cleared out the left side. Once that's done, you work your way in the middle. Alternator, uh, oil pressure sensor here. And then move over so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So you got the two wires on the alternator you have the one that sits uh, on the front there's a ground wire right here in the front of the oil uh, cool, oil cooler oil pressure sensor you got part of the distributor right here uh, then we're gonna be going uh, over here to the other oil pressure sensor on this side there's a ground wire right here you work way over you have your starter wires you have the 
more likely to select the reverse switch. Uh, you have to remove the linkage, work your way up. That's that uh, one from the uh, CIS system. It's inside there. Um, the ignition coil, which is only one wire. Don't take the coil off completely. Just take the blue wire that we took off the distributor, leave everything else in place for right now. We're gonna use that as a reference point. We took out the clutch cable. We took out the speedo cable. Um, that's everything there. We unbolted the exhaust manifold. Uh, headlights, all that's removed. Uh, there's a ground wire that goes across and bolts onto over there by the CIS um, cap right here on the left side, um, right on the fender wall. Oh. Okay. Um, so once you have all that literally unbolted, you're gonna move it all over to the right side fender or the driver's side, pull it all over here. Um, as you can see, we got the engine held up with the cherry picker now. We, have it, we had it held up originally with the jack because uh, once you unbolt the front, uh, remove the front cross member, the engine will want to fall forward and you don't want that to happen while you're doing this work. So you need to hold it up. And then once, you're, once you got the time, uh, you can swap the jack, the jack with the jack stand just to hold it in place for you. So you can slide in your cherry picker. We put pretty much a strap right here, tied it around. That's what's holding it in place right now. Um, remove the two heater core hoses. Uh, this big old vacuum line that sits on the manifold. Actually, no, this guy, yeah, this sits on the manifold right here. This is for the brake booster. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And we left a bunch of the hoses in place because we, we're not going to take them off until the engine's back in. Once the new engine's back in, we're going to use everything here as a reference point. So as we remove everything off of this, we're moving it right back onto the engine. So that way um, we know exactly what goes where. Um, this is crazy, holy crap. You literally, I'm, you watch, no, the chassis is bending. Oh yeah. There's no cross member. Yeah. And yeah, these things are, this thing's literally held by, uh, yeah, more than, way more than just hopes and dreams. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, you should see the underbelly of this car. Because uh, you can't really see it because you can see through it. <laughs> so now that he's done putting the car on jack stands, uh, the next step here is to um, pretty much get the engine back up high. And then we're gonna unbolt back here. There's three bolts on the back motor mount on the back left one that holds it in place here. And then you're gonna come back over here to the right. And then over here, technically you have one. You have this one bolt right here on the back. So you'll see this is there's a brace that goes across and then it goes to the left. If you really want to be honest, it's that one bolt that holds that, that side of the engine down. Um, this is just kind of like a, a, like a brace to move uh, torque or tension around. Um, but the actual motor mount itself is that one 17 or 18 millimeter bolt on the far right. And then that's pretty much it. And that'll pretty much pull the whole engine completely out. Uh, we have to be very careful uh, when we actually unbolt everything because what's going to happen is since we have the engine under tension, um, what's going to happen is that when we pick up the engine and pull, uh, those bolts, when you start taking them off, they're going to want to like grab and kind of strip. So just take your time uh, pulling the bolts out, especially the, the single one on the, on the back right corner. Uh, the last thing that we're doing once we, before we touch those, is that he has to remove the axles. The axles are still bolted onto the car. Pretty much axles, and then the three bolts on the back left and the one on the far right, engine comes right out. I'll give you guys an update once we get to that point. All right, so 
pretty much we got the right motor mount unbolted, which is 17 millimeter. The three left motor mount uh, bolts removed, 13 millimeter. Uh, axles removed, done. Uh, he has Allen bolts for axles, so there were six millimeter, right? That's what he had on here. But if you had a Torx, it was a 40 mil. Uh, T40. No, no. T40 is what I used. Yeah, T40. Um, so everything is now completely unbolted. Everything is ready to go. Uh, one thing we did have uh, kind of a mess was when we pulled the um, uh, axle off on the driver's side, a bunch of gear, um, gear oil came out. Probably highly recommend just draining the transmission before you actually pull the axles off. Um, just in case, guys. Uh, so the next step is to, we're gonna pick the engine up and kind of like, uh, I guess sway it forward and back so we can pull it straight out. Keep an eye out for anything that snags, that wants to drag, or it just gets caught and you're just like trying to force it out. Don't, don't, don't try that. Just make, keep an eye on it. So just, yeah, and just in case, yeah, you have some stuff connected as well. Like Ian was saying, you want to like, like how we do our Mark IV engine pulls, we want to just take our time and take everything out and we're gonna move it out slowly. We're not gonna uh, force anything out as quick as possible because you never know what, it's a good old car. So it's a really old car. We wanna make sure we get everything out as safe as possible. We're causing any crazy amount of damage or no damage at all. That's kind of the goal. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I want you to guide. So what you want to do is right here. Yeah, it's, right, it's caught on that thing in the corner. So I'll see it on it. I'm going to pull back. So we are now done. Uh, we pulled the motor out. Um, you guys watched us pretty much pull it out. Uh, pull out game was strong and we did it with finesse. 
and didn't break anything. We actually only broke one thing. And that was a plastic hose on the top of the valve cover. So the breather hose that sits on the top of the valve cover. Uh, it's split in half. That was Ian's fault. I didn't break anything. I'm proud of that. I typically break a lot of things. Uh, but this time around, I did not break anything. So engine is out. It's right here. We're going to use this pretty much as our platform for transferring things over to our other block right over there. Um, we have an ABA 2.0, right? Uh, we're going to be swapping over an 8-valve head, um, which is in that box over there. So for the next episode, um, when we guys when we start working on this tomorrow, we'll be swapping over this little this little tiny adorable head with the Axie Performance Cam in it as well. Nice, nice. Um, so pretty much we're going to disassemble the head on that one. We'll take the head off clean everything and then swap this guy over the new head gasket and all take this once we put that back together and time it this guy is going to pretty much give us everything the way everything's here we're just going to swap it over clean it and then swap it over over there and then reinstall and i'll get ian to a point where he can pretty much wire it back up and plug everything back in my whole goal here was to pull it out Take the head off, reinstall a new head, time it, and uh, set all the important stuff to to make the car run, and then he just has to plug everything back in uh, and, and install the actual engine in place with the with the, the new Fabulous Manufacturing uh, cross member um, and some other goodies that we have. But we'll show you guys that on tomorrow on the next episode after this. So peace out, everyone. Thanks for tuning in with Ian. <laughs> Um, thanks for tuning in this episode of Pichel's Garage uh, with the Mark II GTI swapping out an A-valve engine. Peace out everyone, you guys have yourself a wonderful day.